Shout out to the recent donators on my stream. I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much. By the way, most of you guys who watch my content are not subscribed. What are you waiting for? Subscribe already. What's up guys, Rage Quitting here, back with another video guide for you guys. And this time we're going to do the Lethality Operative PvP Guide. Let's just jump straight into the talent points here. So in the level 23 row, I'm using Penetrating Strategies. Increases the armor penetration, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage of Corrosive Assault by 10%. So I recently just parsed uh, all three of these different talent options that you can take and I found that this one to be the most consistent with the highest damage uh, penetrating strategies. Okay, Next one up, we're going to go into the level 27 row. We're always going to take debilitate uh, with lethality or with concealment because stun is good. So we're always going to take a stun here and Operative has a very low cooldown on the stun, so need to take advantage of the fact that they have a low cooldown uh, 4 second stun. So we're going to take stun. Moving up in the level 39 row, this is a toss up between critical grenade or corrosive defense. Critical grenade is the more damage option here. Corrosive grenade increases the critical hit chance of all your periodic poison effects to targets it affects by 20%. And the other one here, this is the one I tend to take most of the time because in PvP I like to not die and uh, having this damage reduction is really nice. So what it does is Corrosive Grenade deals 10% more initial damage and grants 2% damage reduction per target it hits for 10 seconds. So really nice if you get a, you know, fat grenade on a group of enemies, you know, three, four, five enemies, you know, you get incremental damage reduction for 10 seconds depending on how many people you hit with a corrosive grenade uh, and it's a much safer option because the rotation here lethality operative it starts from far away by applying your dots but eventually you have to roll in there and get in the clump of of uh, enemy players so that you can do your damage so having that extra damage reduction on your way in you know when you put yourself in that dangerous situation you know stacked on top of a bunch of enemies it is nice to have that little bit of extra damage reduction just in case they decide to turn on you and try to delete you instantly when you roll into them right so i like to take corrosive defense here in the level 43 row the only toss the only two options to me is tactical overdrive and tactical offense um offense offense uh but anyway tactical overdrive you know you can reset the cooldown of your stim boost and you get increased mastery for 20% for 15 seconds. This would be really good or nicer if the cooldown was a little shorter. I would like to have it on a little bit shorter of a cooldown, but since it's not, I'd like to just take a flat 5% critical hit chance and damage and healing by 5% at all times. In ranked, probably having, uh, you know, being able to reset your stim boost and get like an extra burst of, of damage, especially in solo ranked, you know, where the, the goal is to just, you know, you kind of just try to kill each other as fast as you can. You know, this might have more merit in the arena, but I think in regular war zones overall, uh, just having a, you know, flat increase is better in my opinion. So I will be taking tactical offense here. All right, moving up to the 51 row, I really tend to favor this damage reduction by 5%. This is a flat 5% at all times. It's always good. Whereas uh, increased movement speed is not really necessary uh, with operative. You know, you have exfiltrate, you have hollow traverse, you know, it's not that hard to, to stick onto your targets, especially because you have a stun as well. So maybe if you're having trouble keeping up with people, you're not really good at chasing chasing things down maybe having the increased move speed can help you there um, but otherwise if you don't need that i'd rather just take the flat five percent damage reduction the middle one here advanced cloaking reduces the cooldown of cloaking screen by 30 seconds if you don't know cloaking screen is your oh shit i need to leave right now button so having that on a lower cooldown is nice but you know there's there's some matches you can go through an entire match without having to even use cloaking screen at all so then that would be a wasted talent point here so very situational, only useful when you need it, whereas 5% damage reduction is useful at all times. All right, moving up to the level 64 row here, med shield, your shield probe heals you for 5% of your maximum health when it collapses. This is kind of along the same lines as this row here. Uh, you know, 5% damage reduction is always good. Healing yourself for 5% of your max health 
is always good on a very low cooldown too because shield probe has a shield probe right here has a 30 second cooldown so this is damage reduction you turn it on you get these little orbs around your body and when it fades you know you get a chunk of health back okay so always good here moving up in the level 68 row hollow traverse uh, is usually what i will take in regular war zones because the maps are big you need to be mobile so having more mobility here really really helps when i don't take this talent point i will choose to take flashbang instead for more crowd control in the arena setting i would probably take flashbang as long as you can coordinate with your team like hey i'm gonna cc the healer don't touch him right or especially in group group setting it's much easier to use flashbang because you can you're in comms with your teammates you can tell them hey don't touch these guys i'm gonna flashbang them but in regular war zones your teammates who are not in comms with you are always gonna fuck this up so i don't take flashbang in unranked war zones ever it's always hollow traverse okay but play with it how you like up here in the level 73 row, it's only it's a toss-up between Evasive Imperative and Blow for Blow. Evasive Imperative will get your evasion back off cooldown much, much sooner than it normally does. And evasion is very useful, not just for dodging white damage or weapon damage attacks, but it also purges any hostile effects on you. So usually I use evasion not just to dodge white damage, but also to get myself out of roots and slows. So very nice to have that coming back on a much shorter cooldown than it normally would be with Evasive Imperative. But if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you can take Blow for Blow. Blow for Blow, it keeps Evasion on its standard one minute cooldown, but now every time you activate it, you will reflect 150% of direct single target tech and force damage back to the attacker while Evasion is active. So this is an offensive and defensive talent point here because let's say a fury marauder jumps on you and you don't have this talent here and you have the other one well you will be dodging all of his obliterates all of his furious strikes you know his weapon damage abilities but you're still going to get hit by smashes and raging bursts so if you want to be immune to or at least all of his damage the weapon damage and the force damage you can take blow for blow and activating it will then have you dodge all of his obliterate all of his fury strikes but now you're gonna reflect those big raging bursts right back in his face and the next time he'll think twice about jumping on you and hitting you with a fat raging burst okay Just play with these talents how you like but this is how i have it set up right here typically the only things i'll switch is in this row if i'm playing arenas i'll take flashbang and in this row uh, sometimes I'll take Evasive Imperative, sometimes I'll keep Blow for Blow. That's just depending on how I'm feeling. But this is the setup right here. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Let's get back to the video. Alright everybody, moving on to the gear section of this video. For the tactical, we are using Viral Elements, <clears throat> Toxic Haze spreads, Toxic Blast effect, and Lethal Strike does additional damage to all targets affected by Toxic Haze. And then here... The packages locked and loaded, uh, ranged and tech damage and healing is increased by 5%. So this is just flat 5% damage at all times. And then tactician's package, gaining a tactical advantage, increases your crit chance by 10% for 10 seconds, which is, you know, pretty much all the time. So passive 10% extra crit chance pretty much all the time. And, you know, ranged and tech damage and healing increased by 5% at all times. All right. In my stat sheet here, we are running... Just, you know, above the 7.14% alacrity, so I have pretty close to 9% here. No accuracy is required, so don't pick up any accuracy pieces. And then all the rest is going into crit chance, okay? The relics we are using are on hit mastery and on hit power. In order to get, you know, pieces that don't have accuracy on it, you need to make sure that you are... <clears throat> if you're only going to do this on one character, make sure you set your loot discipline to medicine, the healing spec, because the healing stuff doesn't have accuracy on it. So when you're opening your PvP weekly boxes, um, if as long as you are loot discipline set to medicine, you shouldn't be getting any accuracy pieces, okay? The other ways that I got the rest of my gear is having multiple level 80 characters. Um, that really helps because you need these... Why don't they fix this shit? They need these, you know, three shin product accelerants to get and upgrade your PvP gear. And you can only get this through PvP. So doing it on one character only will take you a long time. So having multiple level 80s really helps, okay? And then making sure that you 
are specced into heals before you open boxes on this character and maybe your other characters if you if you have the option to do that okay but anyway no accuracy as much crit as you can get after you go above that 7.14 percent in alacrity and that's how i have it set up right now all right everybody so getting into the rotation part of this video basically what you want to do for lethality operative is to get both of your dots up on the target and when you go in we're going to shiv to increase the rest of our damage because shiv you know gives them a debuff so we're going to shiv we're going to hit a toxic blast followed by a toxic haze because of the tactical here after you toxic haze we're going to you know let's just pretend that there's aoe to be had here so there's multiple enemies after you toxic haze all the targets that are affected by it will then take damage from your lethal strike so <clears throat> and also toxic haze spreads your corrosive dart effect to everything that it's touching as long as you have a corrosive dart up on the main target okay so what we're gonna do here we're gonna double dot we're gonna shiv toxic blast toxic haze and then lethal strike okay after that we're gonna spam corrosive assault if you need the tactical advantage we should have shiv available so you can hit another shiv so that you can keep using corrosive assault until you can no longer do so when you can't do corrosive assaults anymore and you no longer can get tactical advantages from shiv we're just going to go ahead and reapply our double dots because by that time they, they should be fading soon anyway. So we are going to reapply the dots and then do that whole rotation all over again. All right. Also in the beginning of the rotation, uh, after we double dot, we're going to use stim boost to get a bunch of uh, alacrity so that we can go through our rotation faster. Okay, so here we go. Double dot, stim boost, shiv, toxic blast, toxic haze, lethal strike. One more shiv, and then now we're gonna use corrosive assault, corrosive assault, corrosive assault, one more shiv, one more corrosive assault, and now we're gonna reapply our dots. Double dot here, shiv, toxic blast, toxic haze, lethal strike, one more shiv, and then spam those corrosive assaults again, okay? Corrosive assault, corrosive assault, corrosive assault, one more shiv, one more corrosive assault, okay? And now we can rinse and repeat, double dot, shiv, Toxic Blast, Toxic Haze, Lethal Strike, one more Shiv, Corrosive Assault Spam, one, two, three, into another Shiv so that we can do one more Corrosive Assault. Sometimes you'll get a proc, you can do another one. And now we're gonna reapply our dots, okay? Very simple rotation here. Shiv, Toxic Blast, Toxic Haze, Lethal Strike, one more Shiv, and now we just spam Corrosive Assaults again, okay? get another tactical advantage with the shiv and then use corrosive assault again before we reapply our double dots okay get the shiv toxic blast toxic haze lethal strike all right one more shiv corrosive assault corrosive assault corrosive assault one more shiv and corrosive assault again okay rinse and repeat that rotation get over here on the training dummy and you will have it down in no time all right guys, last thing here to close out the video is just some additional tips and tricks to help keep you alive. Um, you have shield probe, which mitigates damage. And when it collapses because of this talent point here, you get some health back. Uh, side note, stim boost will also give you damage reduction and it'll give you uh, periodic healing over time during the duration of stim boost. So that's another way to get heals back on yourself. <clears throat> also, do not forget to Try and keep two stacks of cultal probes on yourself at all times for just that passive, you know, small heals coming back to you over the duration of the war zone. Okay, always try to keep these cultal probes on yourself. Uh, lethality is most popular for the fact that they can use exfiltrate and get an instant cast cultal infusion off. Okay, just like that. You can really use this to help your friend your you know your friendlies out as well if you're not the one that needs heals every time you roll try to look for somebody you know that needs heals and just pop them an instant cultal infusion okay if you don't need it yourself <clears throat> also going into stealth here and using sleep dart let's say you're uh you know you're not in combat the enemy player that you want to crowd control is not in combat you can always use sleep dart to keep them out of the fight you know right before you open up on your main target okay uh, outside of that if you don't have 
you know, if Culto Infusion is on cooldown, let's say I'll put it on cooldown now, and I already have two stacks of Culto Probes on myself, you still have Diagnostic Scan. Uh, you have to stand still to cast this. It costs no energy, and you can just keep spamming it like so. <clears throat> okay, so use your utility, use your damage reduction, use your heals, okay, to help keep yourself alive. That's going to do it for this guide, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did, and I will see you on another one. Peace.